Hey guys, welcome to Maya Advanced Dialogue 1. This is our monologue sequence. By now you guys should have a very clear idea of how this works. First you should use a storyboard to plan out the action and the poses. You can print out a storyboard of sheets from our website, just draw a pencil and paper, or you can download a storyboard and use software and a tablet if you have one. Sketch out a rough plan for your main actions and poses that will go with the dialogue. Break up the dialogue into chunks of thought where you want the character to change his poses. Write or type each chunk of dialogue into a board panel under the action section for each panel, then draw out the poses for each panel. Keep in mind to avoid the cliche and overuse the poses and avoid twinning. These are your acting choices. Think of good poses that convey what the character is thinking. And remember C curves and S curves in your poses. Don't forget silhouettes and a variation of speed in your movement. And above all, remember to incorporate all the animation principles where appropriate. Don't forget to put in your big poses on the most pronounced dialogue words and on the vowel of those words, and add in accents on some of the less pronounced dialogue vowels here and there. Be sure to block out your animation first, continue to play blast to see the progression as you set new poses throughout your blocking. We want this one to be really nice. This will be a demo reel piece that you can use to submit to potential employers for character animation work. Alright, so the audio we're using for this exercise, it's a clip from Anchorman, it's Will Ferrell talking to his dog. Well, it's not technically a monologue because he's talking to a dog, but it's a one character scene anyway. Of course, this is my interpretation of the dialogue. You guys choose your own poses, your own accents. You pooped in the refrigerator? And you ate the whole wheel of cheese? How'd you do that? It's actually, I'm not even mad. It's amazing. All right, so as we discussed before, uh, it's lip sync first, then all the body animation, and then we do the facial at the end. All right, so this is how we would start it. This is a file that we have that has the lip sync already animated in it. So we'll just break this down first. All right, so don't forget that when we're animating lip sync, you want to set the poses on the mouth a frame before you actually hear the sound. And that's because it actually does take time for sound to reach our ears from its origin. So you can do it this way when you're in your file. You can get in your perspective window, you can get his mouth up really close. Select this mouth control and just start animating with all of these controls. Remember on this rig too, you want to keep the, on this particular rig, uh, you want to use this swirl Y. You want to keep his teeth just below the uh, lip here. Try and keep your mouth shapes two frames apart if you can. If the character's talking at a normal pace or a slow pace, two frames apart is going to be easy to do. Try and keep them two frames apart, but if, if the character does start talking fast, you'll have to put some of the some of the mouth shapes one frame apart. If you do put the mouth shapes one frame apart, just make sure that you keep the mouth shapes more subtle and you don't crank the mouth open really wide or uh, go into extremely different mouth shapes one frame apart because the mouth will pop. You can also do some easing. So you can see for this M sound, we just, over one frame, we just eased it a little bit. As we discussed in the lip sync session, this closed mouth is for M, B, and P sounds. And it's always good to hold those closed mouth shapes for at least a frame. So we held it for a frame, but we just gave it a bit of a moving hold. You also want to try and hold these mouth shapes for U, R, and anything where the character is pronouncing an OO sound, right? You want to hold that as well so it reads. And you could give it a bit of a move as well. We just held it for one frame. Yeah, you also want to hold some of these F shapes anywhere you can. Hold the M, B, and P, the closed mouth. Hold the U mouth shapes where you can. I know sometimes it's going to be difficult. You'll see that you'll find that it's difficult to hold them sometimes because and still have the, the, the mouth shapes keyed one frame before the sound. It can, be, it can be a little tricky. You may have to, after keying, um, as you start keying these mouth shapes down the timeline, you'll find you're getting ahead of the sound. So you may have to, you know, grab a, a section and shift it back. But it's better to err on the side of having the mouth shapes animate a little earlier than the sounds than late. So try to hold these, uh, the, the U and the M, and try and hold the F and V. This is for F and V. The bottom lip, lip is tucked into the teeth. You want to try and hold those two for at least one frame where you can, just so they read better. We see it for longer. It's just what it does is registers the audience's mind. Okay. So we just did a quick play blast of this section. You pooped in the refrigerator. When it says refrigerator, it's a pretty quick. Make the mouth shapes a little more subtle if they're only one frame apart so that things don't pop. So don't go all the way. Uh, only go into the mouth shape maybe at 50%. Also too, after the character is finishing a sentence, if they don't talk for a little while, there's a pause there. You either want to get the mouth closed. If it's a long period of time where they don't speak, you want to close the mouth. It works if you keep the mouth something like that, just sort of half open, a slight bit open, right? If they're going to start speaking again soon. What you want to avoid with lip sync is to make it look like poppy. You don't want the mouths to be popping and flickering. So you just want to keep things um, moving smoothly through the mouth shapes. 
and sort of blending together. Yeah, so continue animating your lip sync till you get to the end. Continue scrubbing your animation on the timeline. Give it a play blast, check it, make sure, uh, make sure it's working well. Make sure the timing and the mouth shapes are all working well. Analyze it yourself and try and determine if where things are going wrong, if they're going wrong, and then go back and, and make the fixes. So when you're finished your lip sync, you can move on to the blocking and posing. So let's break down the animation here. So we have him in his first initial pose. This is his first big key pose, or his first major key pose. And then he says, you pooped in the refrigerator. So we just accented on that. We kept him in this pose and just gave him an accent. So this is for pooped. You'll notice it's not just an accent with the head. It's a full body accent, but he stays in the same general pose. And then we did a lot with the face here. So just an accent for you pooped in the refrigerator. And notice he, he bounces up on the O and pooped the vowel, right? Pooped in the refrigerator. That pronounced word and we decided to change poses on that one. You don't have to. Um, you know, you can choose your own areas to change poses and accent. So anticipation pose and, and then he goes up on and. You notice here too that we overlap the head. That can just be done in the graph editor at the refining stage. So after you set all your poses and you spline all the curves, you can go through and do all the overlap in the graph editor. Or if you want, you can block that out. This can be a separate pose. You can do that in your blocking if you like. Can't you eat the whole? We changed poses on, on the O and hole. And then there's a little bit of a hold there. So we just got him to blink and just think about it for a minute. The hole and then wheel of cheese. The hole. Jeez. Don't forget to add in arcs. You'll notice when he turns for the word hole, if you watch the top of his head, it sort of bounces in an arcing motion. And also to the arms arc as well. There's a path of action that the hand takes that you want to include in there. If you need to set an, an extra pose in the middle to get the arc, then go ahead and do that. So right on the O and how we brought his hand to his forehead, just getting into this kind of pose. And then he pops up into this pose on the A and... Ah, I, actually, I'm not even so when he goes to say, I'm, I'm not even mad, you'll notice these, uh, there's a little accent. Uh, we bring him into this key pose and he stays there, but the accent's on mad. right on the A in mad. We add, included a little accent. We kept them in the same general pose, but just accented. Mad. It's amazing. The A in amazing. He goes into his final pose right on the A in, in amazing. Sprinkle in your main poses and your gestures and accents where you need to. But remember to do it on the vowels. So once you have all your poses posed on the timeline where you want them to be, and your timing set. Play blast everything. As you're working, you should keep scrubbing over your animation. As you've seen in all the, the, the previous classes that we've done, is I usually set a pose and then scrub over the last two or three poses that I've done and just check and think about what I want to do next and uh, where I want to put that next pose. So you scrub over your animation as you're working. Uh, play blast it every now and then and just see how it's coming along. Make changes to your timing and you really get your posing and your timing locked down. Then you can spline your curves, calm down some of your moving holds, put in some overlap on the head, make sure you're, if the character takes a step, you can use that translate Y, break the tangents. You know, you can break tangents to get the head to overlap as well, and not just the head, but any other parts of the body, like the wrists. Um, oftentimes you, you're overlap, doing a lot of overlap on the head and wrist and breaking tangents on the rotation curves to sort of force it to overlap where you want them to be as you're going through the refining stage. So at this point, we're going to start tackling our facial animation. We have all of our lip sync in, our body animation's done, and now we're going to animate the face. So as you can tell so far, there's always like an order of operations in which we do things. And whenever I go to tackle facial animation, I always do the eye direction first. I'll go down the entire length of the scene, do the, all the animation on the eyes, the eye direction where the, where the character is looking, and then I'll go through and do all the blinks, and then do the brows. So I always place the eyes where I want them to be looking at the beginning. You'll notice in a lot of animated productions, whether it be a TV show or, or a film, eye direction often, often but not always, changes with a blink. So the eyes will pop from one direction, blink, when they open, they'll already be in another direction, or looking in another, in another direction. So they can be changed with a blink, but not all the time. When a character's thinking, you can use these little eye darts. It really helps to convey to the audience that the character has some thoughts. So you can see here the eyes, this is a little eye dart here, and then he blinks. And then there's some eye movement here. You can do a double eye dart. You can do a double blink. So we go through and do all the eye direction and think about where you want the blinks to be as you're animating the eyes moving around. You don't want to over-animate the eyes. Um, you know, you want to change eye direction and keep it there for, for a bit. Also, another thing to remember is if the character is changing their, their position, like from here, you have to think about where the character they're talking to is. You want to keep the eye direction on that character. So if the character is moving up and there's no blink, see I chose to put a blink here, 
it's a long blink. You want to make sure that the eye direction stays on the subject that they're talking to or looking at. In this case, he's talking about the wheel of cheese that's somewhere else in the room. The character's talking about something else that's in the room. They can look in that direction. Yeah, so go through and animate all the eye direction first. Then I usually go through and do all the blinks. And when you're doing blinks, think about where you're going to put the blinks. It's important to, to have well-placed blinks. It seems like a really minor thing, but well-placed blinks can really improve the quality of your animation. So when we talk about well-placed blinks, sometimes they can just be placed in a, in a dead space where the character's not really doing much. So at the beginning here, he's just sitting there listening. I put a blink in there. Another good place to put a blink in is on an anticipation pose. Or you can put it slightly after the anticipation and before they go into their major pose. So this blink here is on his way up. And you can see here when the character pops up with his whole body, that the eyes sort of flap open at that point, and so do the brows. So that's something to think about. A good place is to put your blink. Now, a lot of times on head turns, head turn and eye di direction change, you can put a blink, change of eyebrow positions. So just varying things up and thinking about why the character might blink in that area, if they're thinking. And then sometimes you just want to put a blink in if the character is not doing anything for a while, just to keep them alive, right? But don't over blink. All right, so eyebrows, when you get to the eyebrows, the first thing that uh, you should really think about when you're posing the eyebrows is to keep in mind the line of action that runs through the brows. So these nice S curves, S curves and C curves. We'll just go through some of them that were done here. So then he moves into this pose. Also too, it's good to vary them up a little bit and not have them twin. Um, sometimes they can twin, but you know, it's also nice to at, at some points have them a little bit different. But overall, it's a, it's a C curve. It's a general C curve that's happening here. It's nice to keep it uh, looking more realistic and not so robotic. Back to a C curve on the eyebrows. Remember, when you bring the brows up, you should bring the lids open a little bit too. Because when you, if you look in the mirror and raise your eyebrows, you'll see your lids will come up with it a little. Also too, on blinks, it gives it a nice feel. If on blinks, you uh, lower the eyebrows down. You don't want to overdo that because it'll look like the eyebrows are popping down into his face a little bit, but it's nice to bring the eyebrows down with, and it goes with the whole arc of the body as he's turning here in this example. You can see his head's arcing, uh, his whole body kind of dips down and goes into the next pose. And we do the same thing with the face. It just complements it, right? So he blinks and the brows come down and it's just this whole uh, arcing motion that's happening with his body and, it, and, and in the facial animation as well. And as we talked about earlier, we, we blinked on the anticipation, and then it worked with the eyebrows coming down and up again. And then again here, we're thinking about that unibrow situation. So you can see the tips connect. This is always a nice look. So just like you're treating every pose like a sculpture, you should treat every facial expression with like a sculpture as well. And just really think about these uh, elements that we're talking about here and make sure they're all in. And then you can see here again, the character's changing position and arcing down and back up into his position. And then he blinks, and the brows sort of do the same thing. They, they squash and they sort of come down, back up again. And it complements that arc in the, in the body motion. Bringing the eyebrows down for the blink is a nice, just gives it a nice feel. And as he settles, you can bring the brows back up. And you can see here in this part, the brows, they ease up really slowly after he's finished uh, settling. So you can offset that animation as well with the face from the body. You can also anticipate with the eyes too. You can see here he's going to into this pose where he's, he's saying, how'd you do that? His eyes, before he goes into this facial expression, his eyes are gonna pop open really wide. So you can actually anticipate with the eyes, with, with just the face as well. So a nice variation of different facial expressions are good. Of course, they're gonna go with what the character is saying. You know, you can, you can practice saying it in the mirror if you want and just watch your face, see what it does. You see we have, again, you can draw a line through these brows and then it goes into burying it up a little bit. Uh, the brows squash on the blink a little bit. And then we have this line that can go through the brows again. And then it goes into the C curve on the brow. So just go through and animate your character, focusing on one aspect at a time or one step at a time. Starting with the lip sync and all the things we learned about lip sync. Focus on that first. Then go through and do your blocking and timing. Focusing on all the th things we learned about blocking and timing. Then go through and refine it. Focusing on all the things we learned about that. And then do your facial animation starting with eye direction, blinks, and then the brows. Since this is going to be a demo reel piece, send us play blasts of each step. Uh, after the lip sync is done, you can send us a, a play blast for comments and feedback. And then you can send us another one for your blocking for the body poses, and then another one for the refining, and then the final with the facial animation as well.
You want this one to be as nice as possible so that you can include it in your demo reel and send it out to potential uh, employers, animation studios.